In this tutorial, you will learn about the three types of giant African snails. You'll also learn about the potential pests, parasites, and diseases that snail farmers should be aware of and how to prevent them. You will learn about using dried leaves in the greenhouse, sanitation, and wearing gloves. Finally, we will cover how to handle dead snails to maintain a clean and healthy environment for your snails. With this guide, you'll be on your way to building a successful snail farm. Achatina fulica, also known as the giant African land snail, is a species native to East Africa. It is unique with a conical shell that is typically light brown with white and dark brown stripes. Achachetina marginata, also known as the West African giant snail, is a species native to West and Central Africa. It is famous for its spirally coiled shell, which is usually brown with dark brown to black stripes or markings. The skin of this species ranges from dark brown to black. Achatina achatina, commonly referred to as the giant tiger land snail, is a species of snail native to West Africa. It is known for its large cone-shaped shell, which can grow up to 20 centimeters in length and is usually yellowish-brown with zigzag stripes. Achatina achatina snails are hermaphrodites, capable of producing both sperm and eggs. The mating process involves two individuals and can last for several hours. Juveniles reach sexual maturity within 6 to 12 months, with a life expectancy of up to 10 years in their natural habitats. Snow farmers must protect their snails from a variety of land animals, including mice, frogs, crows, ducks, lizards, snakes, and centipedes. To reduce predation, snow farmers need to close their greenhouses. Daily removal of leftover food is also recommended to prevent the attraction of pests such as ants and flies. Flies lay their eggs near the snails, allowing their larvae to feed on them. Ants can also attack and kill weak snails. The major parasite on snails is the Siomizid fly, also called the snail killing fly. Siomizid lays 20 to 40 eggs in the snail shell or on the snail. The eggs hatch in about one week and a small worm starts feeding on the body tissue. They feed until the body is reduced to a decaying carcass and then pupates within the shell. After a 10 day incubation period, the adults emerge. The best protection is to keep the greenhouse closed at all times. Little is known about the diseases that attack Achatina Achatina in West Africa. However, Basic hygiene practices can help prevent and reduce the spread of diseases. To further boost the snail's immune system, incorporating calcium and herbs into their feed is recommended. Treating dry leaves with hot water can be a useful technique for preparing a layer for snow greenhouses as it helps to eliminate any potential harmful microorganisms or pests that might be present ensuring a cleaner and safer environment for your snails. Soak the dried leaves in boiling water for approximately one minute. This temperature can effectively kill harmful bacteria, parasites, and molds. Once the leaves have been treated, spread them out and allow them to dry. They can then be used as a covering in the greenhouse to provide shade from the sun. To prevent the transfer of pathogens and pests, and to maintain a clean and safe environment for the snails, it is recommended that one wears clean clothes and clean shoes when entering the greenhouse. This will help minimize the transfer of dirt, dust, and other contaminants into the greenhouse. Wearing gloves is essential for snow farmers as it aids in preventing the transfer of bacteria, viruses, and other pathogens from the farmer's hands to the snails. This helps to maintain a clean and safe environment for the snails, reducing the risk of disease transmission. Additionally, gloves also protect the farmer from contracting diseases like meningitis while handling the snails or working in the greenhouse. Dead snails in a greenhouse can pose a number of health and sanitation concerns, 
If left uncollected, they can attract insects and serve as a source of bacteria and viruses that can infect healthy snails. To prevent these problems, snow farmers should establish a routine of checking their greenhouse at least once a week for any dead snails. When they find dead snails, they should carry along a bucket to pick them up and take them out of the greenhouse to bury them. Burying dead snails outside the greenhouse is important to prevent the spread of pathogens and parasites and to maintain a clean and odor-free environment. And that concludes our training. Remember to keep following these simple steps to ensure the health and well-being of your snails. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Our team at Trisilis is always here to help. Thank you for your time and attention.